W3B plot development is about making your story truly come to life through well-chosen details. And we're going to talk about five different techniques that can help you do that. So the three level for this particular target is going to lay out the techniques that we would like to see you able to use. Uh, for the proficiency level, you'll be able to consistently and effectively use three of the five techniques that I'm going to show you um, to help develop the experiences, events, and characters of your story. Dialogue, pacing, description, reflection, and multiple plot lines. At the two level, you can consistently and effectively use two, or you can use three, but with minimal development. At the one level, you consistently and effectively use one, or you use two uh, with minimal development. And at the four level, you can consistently and effectively use all five techniques, or the three that you choose are especially well chosen, or especially done well. So the first technique we're going to talk about is dialogue, and dialogue is simply speech between characters, which can reveal inner thoughts and character relationships, which is a nice way to use it. How to, uh, format is key here. If you have sloppily formatted dialogue, it can be hard to follow the line of conversation between your characters, and that's going to make it less effective. So some key considerations, punctuation goes inside any quote marks that you use when you use dialogue, and you should have quote marks when you have dialogue, and a new speaker equals a new paragraph every time. Okay. Now here's just a very brief example, and you'll see I've gone with a the theme for my examples this time. I believe it's a Dumbledore who said this. After all this time, and then notice this is a new paragraph, always said Snape. This is a very short little snippet of conversation, but if you know the Harry Potter stories, you know exactly what this means. This is Snape telling us with one word that his love for Lily, Harry's dad, or mom, uh, was eternal, that he's never forgotten her, and for that reason, he's always been on the side of Dumbledore since uh, what happened to Lily happened. We get a lot of background for this character. We learn to truly trust him through this two-line um, section of dialogue. So you don't need to have a ton of dialogue to be effective, but you do need to have strong dialogue. And what's key is really getting to the heart of your characters and also um, using dialogue that would be natural. Uh, for instance, if you have uneducated characters, then their dialogue is going to reflect that. If you have a conversation between two college professors, I would certainly see different vocabulary used in that case because they would be more educated. So think about the characters who you are trying to portray, think about how they would normally talk, and try and portray that through your dialogue. Pacing is the second technique that you could use to better develop your story. And pacing simply means giving more development to key events. So once you've created your outline, which you saw with W3A, you'd look and mark the events which are most crucial to your story, and those would get more development. This can be a time-saving technique. I mean, let's be real. You're probably on a deadline working on this. So don't develop every single little piece unless your goal is to publish a novel, in which case you might want to do that. Uh, but for our sake... Make sure that you develop at least the key moments. How to, again, use your outline to select those key moments to develop. And then, this is where it's nice, you're actually going to use other techniques to add development. So this pacing is more about making your decisions about what to develop, but you could use dialogue, for instance, to develop, or you could use reflection, or you could use description, which we'll take a look at next. Here's just a brief example for you. Um, if you were to read Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, the first in the Harry Potter series, um, you'd see that the final chapter is the showdown with Voldemort. The entire book has been leading up to it, but that showdown is only eight pages. And what that really tells us is Voldemort was never the main focus of this particular book. Instead, the main focus was really the development of the relationships between Harry and Hermione and Ron, and that is the bulk of the book. That is what J.K. Rowling chose to use most of her emphasis on, not Voldemort. It's an entirely different focus for the overall book. Description is the third technique that you might consider using, and description could be using a variety of techniques to help make a more vivid picture for the reader. This will actually connect into W3D language use as well, so this is a nice way to attack two targets, if you will. You could use sensory details, um, the, what you would see, what you would hear, what you would smell, what you could touch, and what you could taste. Oop, sorry to help build uh, the picture, whatever is appropriate for the story that you're working with. You could use figurative language, things like metaphor, simile, personification, antithesis. You could use specific details, um, and you could even talk about um, using well-chosen verbs, well-chosen nouns, the more specific the better, to help make the picture very clear for your reader. Now, 
some ways into this particular um, target. If you are someone who likes to visualize, you can either imagine or you can actually sketch out a scene, get it down on paper um, the way that you see it in your mind, and then go back to the words. You might try that if that's your um, go-to medium for processing. You might also consider using a thesaurus to choose stronger words. Uh, rather than saying walk, look up different words for walk that might better convey the emotion or the speed with which your character is walking, for example. Now here is another example from Harry Potter uh, from the first book, and this is the troll scene where they find the troll in the girl's bathroom. It was a horrible sight. Twelve feet tall, its skin was a dull granite gray, its great lumpy body like a boulder with its small bald head perched on top like a coconut. It had short legs, thick as tree trunks, with flat, horny feet. The smell coming from it was incredible. So we've got a little bit of sensory detail, clearly what we see, and that's all description after that, what we smell, that it smelled terrible. Uh, we've got some figurative language going on. It's like a boulder. Its legs are um, like tree trunks, as thick as tree trunks. Um, and then a lot of other very specific word choices here. We give a very, instead of just saying it's tall, 12 feet tall, it's a granite gray colored skin, it has a lumpy body, it has a small bald head like a coconut, there's some more figurative language, um, flat horny feet. So a lot of figurative language, sensory details, specific details to help paint a very vivid picture of what this troll looked like. All right, reflection is the fourth technique that you might choose to use to help better develop your story. And this is where characters and or narrators reflect on the significance of events, or they, in other words, tell us what was important about a moment in the story. You might consider what themes you want to reveal through your narrative when you're thinking about what you want to reflect on. And you might also consider formatting. Uh, if you're going to have it be a character thought, you might use italics to help format it. That can help clarify what's character thought versus what a character is saying versus what the narrator is telling us. Now, this particular example from Harry Potter is not character thought. The story is all told in third person. So this is just from our narrator's point of view. There are some things you can't share without ending up liking each other, and knocking out a 12-foot mountain troll is one of them. So we have some reflection on the significance of the mountain troll incident on Halloween in the bathroom, and also really tying into the bigger theme of the Sorcerer's Stone book, which is the developing friendship between Ron, Hermione, and Harry. All right, the final technique that uh, we'll be talking about is multiple plot lines. And we've talked a little bit about this in the W3A basic elements, but just to give you a bit more information on it, do you consider using multiple conflicts to create a more engaging story? Life does not exist in a vacuum, and I'm willing to bet that each and every one of us has multiple conflicts that we are dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis, be it the struggle to get up in the morning, uh, the struggle to get good grades, the struggle to get everything done in time, the struggle to get along with our best friend. It goes on and on. So channel that into your story, too. Your character more than likely has more than one problem in his or her life. Self-conflicts are really good mixers. So you might think about, what is your character's flaw? Um, is he a little too proud? Is she a little too vain? Does she not trust people? Once you've decided upon that, you can work that into your story with your other conflict. What's key, though, is you want to make sure that you bring both conflicts to a close. If your character has some self-problem, like they're too full of themselves, make sure they're not still too full of themselves at the end of the story because characters or your readers are going to wonder what's going to happen to them in the future, and it will make them a lot less sympathetic to your reader or to your character. Just an example from Harry Potter, he had multiple conflicts if you look through the whole series. Voldemort, of course, was a recurring theme that um, built up to the end. But I'd say, too, accepting his own fate, um, that he would eventually have to face Voldemort, and then eventually that he would have to die. And then also, and this is a big one, accepting other people into his life. He did not have a good childhood. He lost his parents. He was raised by people who didn't really seem, seem to love him. It was hard for him to accept his friends initially and then also to accept their help and also to accept that they too might be willing to sacrifice themselves. And we see that echoed through all of the books. Okay, so here is my example. We've seen this particular outline before um, when we've looked at the W3A. So just to recap here, in this particular story, we have our main character, Jane, who is a lawyer, and she has two conflicts. So we've got multiple conflicts worked in already. Um, she has depression, and also she doesn't get along with her coworkers. Okay. So already dealing with multiple conflicts, and I'll address that one first. Uh, we built up to a climax here of Jane quitting her job, and part of that was because of the depression, part of it was because she didn't get along, but the final um, resolution ended up being that she reflected on what she really wanted to do and became a victim advocate, uh, helping people perhaps like her who have struggled with depression, who have struggled with getting along with others. 
Now to use some of these other techniques, uh, I've just given an example of how I might work them in, in different parts of the story. Um, when I look at the outline, uh, the rising action, Jane loses a major case and gets ripped apart by coworkers, would certainly offer a good place for dialogue. We can show her actually getting ripped apart. So for example, I could have a character named Lola saying, how did you even pass the bar? And I could use the nice strong verb taunted to help make that even uh, more clear emotionally as far as what's going on. And I could do that elsewhere too. As far as pacing goes, uh, I would choose to give the most attention to the hook because I'm really establishing the problems there and then coming back to them. The rising action of the major case and getting ripped apart because that was a key moment that changed um, how she chose to go along with her job or not. And then the climax of her actually quitting her job because I would really want to develop that and help it reveal why the depression and why the coworkers forced her to that point. As far as description goes, um, we could really focus on that climax to help develop it. We want to make sure that that's well developed as far as pacing goes. So here's just one example of what you could say during that time. Jane's hands trembled violently, so I'm describing physically what she's doing, forcing her to clutch the table with white knuckles, again revealing her stress, her anxiety. I quit, she whispered, and whispered because she's not really um, fully confident in herself yet. At this climax, it's her turning point, but she hasn't found her resolution. I would hang on to the, the confidence that she will find until she gets there. And of course, I would build up that more, like that, that wouldn't be the only sign of her quitting. We'd have a conversation with her boss. We'd have uh, perhaps her fretting about going to have the conversation with her boss. We'd have the reaction of her boss. So we'd really develop that particular moment of the story. As far as reflection goes, I think the ending of the story would be a great place for it. Um, she finds a happy resolution, and it'd be nice to connect it into how she did that and, and how it relates to all of her conflicts. So I've done some italics to indicate that it's her own thought. I can save people from my own fate. I can help victims become leaders, Jane thought, a peaceful smile blooming on her face. So I'm actually using some description here, too, to show that she is at peace. And then the reflection um, will tell us that she is going to help people with depression from her own fate, um, that she can help victims become leaders. And I think I'd even tie that into maybe some earlier self-conflict, maybe something happened to her in her past that forced her to um, become a lawyer, but also meant that she wasn't fully comfortable. Maybe something had happened to her, um, some crime had been committed against her. So she is a victim who herself really struggled with becoming a leader in her own life. But at the end, she comes to terms with that and decides that she's going to help others with the same problem that she had. Some pretty strong ref reflection there. And we already talked about multiple plot lines, so that's how you might incorporate the five techniques in a very brief example.